Well, you're probably sitting there wondering, why does Ryan Shrout from PC Perspective, hi, good to see you again, have two pre-built computers, off-the-shelf computers, sitting on his desk? Obviously, we have access to uh, a countless number of video cards and processors and motherboards and SSDs here, so why would I be showing you and focusing on these two systems here today. Well, the idea is pretty interesting. Uh, when the GTX, GeForce GTX 750 Ti launched a long time ago, uh, it launched without a six pin power connector. And we did a story talking about how you could upgrade mainstream off the shelf PCs that were fairly inexpensive to be a gaming PC with really uh, a modest increase in cost with just an off the shelf video card. Well, with the GeForce GTX 1050 and 1050 Ti launching, uh, just a month ago or so, I thought, let's do that again. We had a really good response, really good reaction to it before, so I went down to the local Best Buy and I bought two new systems off the shelf. The two systems are uh, this tiny little guy here. Uh, it's actually really uh, not, uh, it's very a shallow case as well as the Dell Inspiron uh, machine with a Core i3-6100 processor in it, so a, a dual-core hyper-threaded processor. It has a fixed base clock of 3.7 gigahertz. It does not turbo boost. It does not scale up from that. It is 3.7 is what it runs at. It has three megs of cache and a 51 uh, watt TDP on that processor. Now it has other things in there. It has a hard drive. It has uh, like a standard one terabyte hard drive to be sure, eight gigs of memory, uh, that type of stuff, right? So a, a very basic machine on the inside and it only has a 240 watt power supply. Probably been a while since you've heard of one of those. Now the larger machine next to it is the ASUS uh, M32CD. That's the model of that machine. It is a Core i7-6700 processor. So it's actually a fairly high-end CPU. It's a quad-core hyper-threaded part with a base clock of 3.4 gigahertz and a boost clock of 4.0 gigahertz. So uh, pretty pretty reasonable clock speeds there. I think most enthusiasts would be happy. 8 megs of cache, 65 watt TDP. Um, both of these processors have Intel HD Graphics 520 is the series for that. Um, and those are integrated graphics and they're just not very good when it comes to actual gaming. Uh, I should note the Asus machine has a 350 watt power supply, so about 100 watts more than that. So. What the intent was to say, if you own one of these machines already, your dad owns one, your sister owned one, your little brother has one, uh, they bought it for college, they were just doing basic productivity on it, and they were mad that they couldn't run basically any modern game on it. Could you buy a GeForce GTX 1050 Ti graphics card, like the MSI model we have sitting here, um, that doesn't require any external power, so you don't have to worry about the power supply innards uh, so much, or the cording, the cabling that comes out of it, and make it into a feasible gaming machine. The upgrade process on this was really simple. Both these machines are running Windows 10, 64-bit OS. Opening them up is fairly easy. That is something, there are some desktop, like uh, off-the-shelf machines that really have no PCI Express slots, I found when I was looking around uh, my local Best Buy for some, for some machines for this. Um, but the prices range pretty, uh, pretty widely, right? This Dell machine was just about $400, so it's actually a pretty reasonable cost. The Asus machine, a little bit pricier at $749. Um, it does have, you know, a little bit, uh, it has 12 gigs of memory. It has a one terabyte hybrid hard drive instead of just a one terabyte hard drive. So it's got a couple of other little things that maybe make up for that difference. But for $130, which is the cost of this MSI four gigabyte GTX 1050 Ti, could we make these gaming machines? Opening up both these PCs was easy enough. Um, the Asus has a side panel door, just like you've seen on, on numerous other cases. Uh, the Dell machine's actually a little bit more interestingly built. Uh, you've kind of unfolded it. Uh, if you will, open it up like a book. And, uh, but both in both instances, installing the video card is as simple as removing a couple of back plates, um, which don't have screws on them. They have to remove them with a screwdriver. Uh, they're kind of fixed in place. And then snapping the video card into the one single PCI Express by 16 slot inside the computer, making it super easy. You don't have to worry about power connections. You don't have to worry about anything else. And then you can just plug it back in. You plug your monitor into the video card now instead of to the integrated graphics on the motherboard and you're good to go, right? You boot up into Windows 10, you go to geforce.com, you download the latest driver, it's gonna install the driver and GeForce experience, uh, and after that, you're ready to go. You're ready to start playing games at improved image quality settings 
uh, at significantly better frame rates, right? And so we did some testing on this, right? Uh, I ran through 3D Mark, as of course you've got to do, Skydiver and uh, Fire Strike, as well as going through Dirt Rally, Return, uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, and the new Doom game. All these games are relatively new, but not brand new. It's not like Battlefield 1 level new. And I think some of them have presets for, for low qualities that we would have expected maybe these systems to be able to handle otherwise, as you'll see. That's not really even close to the case. If you look at our 3D Mark results first, you'll notice that uh, what we're comparing here is the Core i3-6100 integrated graphics on its own with that same system coupled with the 1050 Ti. And then again, on the ASUS side, we're looking at uh, the Core i7-6700 processor integrated graphics only versus the performance you get out of the machine after adding the 1050 Ti into that particular system. And the results are uh, non-trivially better on that. So for example, on the Dell machine, adding the uh, discrete video card gets you 8.9x the score in 3D Mark Skydiver um, than you were able to get uh, with the integrated graphics. And the integrated graphics on this machine couldn't even run 3D Mark Fire Strike at all. So it was an infinite increase if you want to go that way. And then on the ASUS side, you saw a 6.6x improvement in Skydiver and a 7.6x improvement in score on the Fire Strike result, right? So you're actually you're, you're, you're making the case already that this is substantially improving uh, the capability of these machines to be gaming PCs for a low cost and a, a low barrier of entry in terms of effort. Now, if you look at the actual games, we ran Dirt Rally at 1080p at the low preset, kind of the lowest available options in there, but we wanted to keep the native resolution of most people's monitors, uh, so 1920 by 1080 is what we got there. The Core i3-6100 system was able to get 19 frames per second by itself, but then that jumps up to over 106 frames per second when we add in the GTX 1050 Ti. The ASUS machine with its higher end processor was able to get 34 frames per second um, in Dirt Rally at those settings. So you could probably play it at that if you wanted to, but it jumps to over 173 frames per second with the GeForce GTX 1050 Ti in there. So clearly the higher processor do is doing a, uh, the faster processor is doing a lot of good for Dirt Rally there. Rise of the Tomb Raider, not really playable in either system with their integrated graphics. The Core i3 system uh, managed to get 5.6 frames per second. You imagine my, my pain in even trying to benchmark it at this point. While the Core i7 system from Asus is getting just over 11 frames per second. When we installed the 1050 Ti in both of these, you actually get 95 frames per second on the Dell machine and 106 frames per second on the Asus machine. And keep in mind that that is a 17x improvement in frame rate on the Dell machine and a 9.5x improvement on the Asus machine. We're not talking about 20%, 30%, 50%, or even 100%. We're talking about 17x performance improvement on that. That is uh, obviously dramatic. And then finally, we did uh, some testing with Doom. Again, 1080p resolution on that. OpenGL, uh, everything off the low preset. And we were able to get 9.3 frames per second on the Dell machine and 15 frames per second on the Asus machine with their various processors. Uh, with the new graphics card, we were able to get over 100 frames per second on both of them, right? So that's an 11x improvement on the Dell Inspiron and a 6.6x improvement on the Asus M32 CD. So that's um, that's a lot, guys. That's a huge, dramatic change for, again, a $130 investment that doesn't require you to really overthink things. Do I need to upgrade the motherboard? Do I need to upgrade the power supply? Those things aren't necessary. To prove it's the case, we actually did full system power measurements on the Asus machine. It was just the one we had hooked up at the time. And running Doom at 1080p, um, with the Core i7-6700 processor and integrated graphics, we were pulling just about 98 watts of power from the wall for the entire system. Uh, whereas when we installed the GeForce GTX 1050 Ti that has a 75 watt rated TDP, that jumped up to 144 watts. So an increase of about you know, 45 to 50 watts or so. Um, even You can expect that to draw the full 75 watts in some particular cases, depending on the game and the resolution you're running at, that type of thing. Um, but well under the 350 watt power supply in the Asus machine, but even at 144 watts, which this machine would be less than, that's still well under the 240 watt power supply included in this rig as well. So the general consensus here is that if your video card doesn't require a six pin power connector, pretty much any off the shelf PC that has a by 16 uh, slot on the motherboard will be able to support the power draw of that added discrete graphics. And as a result, you get a machine that is 
worlds more powerful in terms of gaming capability and I think will actually make you a happy entrant into the world of PC gaming. So uh, if you guys are interested in this, you want to see more benchmarks, some more uh, photos of this kind of upgrade process, go to the full story at PCPro.com, if you will, um, and, and give that a look. Other than that, you know, we'll be back. We're, I, I like going down this direction of how do we get people who have these types of machines into our world of PC gaming, right? Can they play Battlefield 1? Can they play um, uh, Titanfall 2 with a simple $130 upgrade for something like the 1050 Ti? Uh, it's an interesting discussion that I think we will continue to have uh, throughout the holiday season, guys. So uh, thank you very much for joining us. We'll be back again soon. If you enjoyed this content, consider supporting in-depth technical content by contributing at patreon.com slash pcper.